Um, we want to welcome you this morning into today's uh, devotion as we share the bread of life from the living word of God. This morning, I want to invite you to turn with me in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. We are doing our reading from the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. The book of Corinthians, being uh, the first letter written by Paul to the Corinthian church members, in uh, it is a uh, 10th chapter, verse 31, the Bible says, Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all the glory of God. Do all to the glory of God. I have entitled my sermonette this morning to read, God deserves praises. Mungu anastahili sifa. God deserves praises. It's normal in human life that human beings love being praised. They love being called big names. They love being told of what they have done. But sometimes they do it by themselves by saying, if it were not me, if it were not during my leadership, if it were not my family, if it were not my efforts, what you see today wouldn't have been there. This is common mostly to leaders, both political and even uh, church leaders, but more especially to our political leaders. I've been watching and listening to political gatherings and rallies where they go. Uh, before they stand up to speak, for them to listen to the cry of uh, that area where they are visited, some junior ones will first begin with some praises, what they have done, how important they are, and it's believed that if they are not praised well, they will not support the project from that area. But uh, what I want us to understand this morning that uh, human praises and even appreciation should not surpass or go beyond what God deserves. Actually, the one who deserves praises and the glory is God. Because without him, no one among us or anywhere can achieve anything. The Bible records in the book of Acts chapter 17, verse 28, that it's in him, it's in God, that we live, we move, and we are beings. Which means, without him, even if you are gifted, even if you have some power of whatever kind, there is nothing uh, you can achieve without God. So to say, human beings, Though by nature they like praises, they like being selfish, but if you are a Christian leader, you don't deserve to be praised. Of course, uh, people can recognize what you have done. It's not bad to, uh, uh, to be appreciated. But there are times when this kind of appreciation is done beyond what the Bible instructs us to be doing. <laughs> now, the same is echoed in the book of uh, Psalms. The Bible says, 
that uh, we are to praise God and we are to give him glory. In the book of uh, Psalms, chapter 22, chapter 22, uh, if you study the entire chapter, you realize that it's full of uh, praising God on how grateful, on how wonderful, on how marvelous he is. Because he's the one who serves glory and is the one who serves praises. Now, why am I bringing this study to us this morning? Uh, this study is here to guide us to avoid what we call uh, self-glory. Self-glory. You know, our servants here in this office or in whichever office you are serving, uh, you need to be humble. The moment you begin feeling that you need to be appreciated, the moment you begin feeling that you need to be praised, it means you have already adopted the selfishness spirit of which uh, whose father is the devil. So self-glory has got no glory of God in it. That's why we have been told in the book of 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 10 and verse that 1 that whatever we do and it's listed there whether we drink, whether we eat, and remember the verse begins by saying, whatever should be done to his glory, God's to God's glory. glory. Now, whatever means, the way I'm putting on, the way I'm talking, the way I'm, I work, the way I walk, and whatever I coordinate, and whatever duty I perform, it's not my duty. I'm performing it on behalf of God. That's why my services should be glorifying God. Now, I mentioned that there is a danger when we end up uh, um, experiencing self-glory because it's written in the book of Isaiah chapter 14 what happened when the devil began glorifying himself because of... Uh, selfishness spirit. The book says in the book of Isaiah chapter 14 verses 13 onward and here I read for thou hast said in thy heart for you have said in your heart so I want us to mark something here that selfishness and the self glory does not begin from outside. It's not uh, an outside force. It is an internal problem that causes people to feel people how are journey, how are journey recognized. I want to liken this um, reading um, to young people, I mean, to young children. Uh, some of us have our parents and have been parents, and uh, maybe some are planning to be parents. When you buy a new thing to a child, and then uh, the child puts on. I used to see what we used to do sometimes back when we were young. We will put it on, and if we happen to be amidst other children, we will create some attention to make sure that uh, <coughs> the new cloth which I'm putting on, the colleagues, other children are aware that day I'll be very happy, including making some funny things, some funny songs, at least to create attention. Look, are you are you not seeing that uh, I'm in a new garment? I mean, uh, are you not seeing that uh, I'm putting on a, a new pair of shoes? I mean, uh, don't you see that I have a gift? So actually, young people are very, many young children are very funny people. Even the inner part, when they have it, they will make sure that other colleagues have realized they are now putting on a new underwear. I think those, who are, those of us who are parents can understand that. Why? It's because of the selfishness spirit that's inborn in their hearts, in their mind. And uh, let's not cheat ourselves. 
We are not exceptional. That's what we are. Right from childhood up to where we are. I'm aware that even here where, where, where we are serving, there are people when their performance is not recognized publicly, they will make it an issue. There are some people who will perform because they are sure somebody is there to appreciate them. Somebody is there to praise them. And there are people who will work intentionally to make sure that uh, maybe your junior person or maybe your senior person has seen what you have done. If you realize that nobody is uh, talking about it, you can. You may even want to try to introduce a coca topic so that uh, at least a comment can be given, so that people can recognize. Oh, so this table was cleaned by so and so. Thank you. I mean, uh, so this chair was uh, arranged by so and so. Thank you. That's the challenge of uh, self glorification, selfishness. So, um, Lucifer is saying, Lucifer is speaking and is saying, for thou hast said in thy heart. So the problem is uh, what's in the heart. I will ascend in heaven. Now, there are so many eyes here. Huh? Not will ascend. I will ascend into heaven. And you know heaven, we all understand what heaven contains. It's the most highest place of God and in the whole world. Now, you see, when you have the spirit of self-glorification in you, you would want to be at the topmost place. You don't want to be somewhere, no. Because uh, self-glorification cannot allow you to be where you will serve. Even if you know rightly from the bottom of your heart. But you, you, you don't deserve to be there. But because of this problem of self-glorification, you will also admire. You will never be satisfied. The challenge of self-glorification, those people are selfish, they are never satisfied. They would always want to ascend, 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 higher, 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 and, 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 and they don't care. That's why in the, polit in, in the political arena, there are those who will do whatever can be done for them to be where they want to be, regardless of the, uh, the, the negative side effects that they are um, ascending, maybe causing. So Satan is saying, I will ascend into heaven, and I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. You don't care even of who is ahead of you. Now, I want to see this picture. Satan is saying, well, I know where God sits, but I want to go above the stars of God. In other words, he's saying, I want to go above God. You see, when somebody has a self glorification he thinks even the unthinkable and workable things. But because uh, it itself is controlling him, well, he, he would want to be there. And uh, the Bible continues saying, apart from I will ascend into heaven and I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sights of the north. Now, just uh, try to understand what uh, that part of this verse is saying that I will sit also. That means somebody is already sitting there. God is already there. But, but suddenly saying, even me, I want to sit where he sits. When a self empire, somebody knows Laban is already working here as the manager. But he's still admiring the office of uh, the manager saying, I want, also, I want also to be where Laban is. I'm just using Laban as an example. So you see, selfishness doesn't care. It's all about uh, one's ego. As long as your ego is satisfied, it's like you're okay. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sight 
of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Mm -hmm. I, I will be like the most high. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if somebody's getting this verse. Satan is saying, well, I know there is a God. But I want also to be like God. This is impossible <coughs> of the impossibility. <coughs> but the devil is, is, is daring to, <coughs> to stand above God and to be like God. That thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. Okay. What happened with self? As everyone has said, Father Yakiburi, who's your name? Manguko. Yes, you can try whatever you can do. Self can uh, <coughs> motivate you to do whatever is evil against your brother, whatever is evil against your sister, whatever is evil against uh, your colleague in the work. But by the end of the day, for sure, you will not go beyond your self ambition. At times, yeah, of course, there are times when people succeed. But the time comes when it's now the time of falling. Now, we have a Swahili say, Pandangazi Ushuka. But somebody say, Pandangazi Ukoromoka. You know, there are times when Ushuka, and there are times you don't Ushuka, but you Ukoromoka. And you know, when you Ukoromoka, that means your life is in danger. Depending on how you ascended, on how you reach to where you are. What are we saying? We say that God is the one who deserves glory. And that's why we read in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 31, that whatever you do, whether you eat or you drink, do it to the glory of God. And the Bible records in the book of Psalms, chapter 50, Verse 15, that um, yes, we have to call upon God during our days of uh, challenges, and God will uh, rescue us. But uh, once we are rescued, let us remember to glorify Him. Allow me to read it the way it is. Uh, Psalm chapter 50, verse 15. Call upon me in the day of trouble. Mm -hmm. I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. So when God has delivered you, when God has done something good to you, when God has, has uh, uh, enabled you to achieve a certain achievement, to make a certain st step, to help someone, to assist someone, that's not your time for you to glorify your, yourself. It's time to give glory to God, because honor and the glory deserves to God, period. Amen. And may God bless us all as we glorify Him today in whatever we shall be doing now and forever <coughs> in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen.